Hello everybody! In today's video, you'll see how to install the VMW ESXi hypervisor onto a server HP ProLine DL380P, how to recover data from a virtual machine of the VM hypervisor and partitions with the VMFS file system. Hello friends! If you need to recover deleted data, view or restore removed browsing history, Hetman Software Products will help you. Follow the link in the description, download the necessary program for free, install it and analyze the disk. The utility will show you the data you can recover, so you will be able to view it or get it back. In our channel and blog you will find solutions to any problem, from installing an operating system or configuring it to fixing possible bugs and errors or optimizing mobile gadgets. Our specialists will answer any questions you ask in your comments under the videos or articles. The hypervisor lets you virtualize service to manage various IT infrastructure, so it allows you to consolidate applications while saving time and resources. In this video, we're going to cover the vSphere ESXi hypervisor by VMware. The basic package of VMware vSphere includes two main components – ESXi and vCenter server. In this video tutorial, I'll show you how to install ESXi version 7 on a server. VMware ESXi is a hypervisor that can be installed onto a physical server and lets you run several operating systems on a single host computer. These operating systems work separately from each other, but they may interact within a network. There are both free and commercial versions of VMware ESXi. The functionality of the free version is somewhat limited. It lets you consolidate a limited number of operating systems on one computer and it cannot be managed with the central server, the vCenter. Nevertheless, the free version of the hypervisor can easily connect to remote storage, where you can create, store and use virtual machines. So, let's begin the installation. The first step to take before you can install ESXi is to download the installation image from the official VMware website. To get a download link for the free version of the hypervisor, you need to sign up. The trial period is 60 days long, which gives you enough time to get acquainted with this tool. When the image is downloaded, you should record it to a pen drive or a disk. To create a bootable drive, you can use any tool available that supports this feature, for example, Rufus. As soon as the bootable drive is ready, you can begin the installation. We're going to install ESXi7 to the survey HP ProLine DL380P without the operating system. Boot with the bootable pen drive or disk. Select the installation device and press Enter to start the installation. After that, you will see the ESXi installer loading. Brief system information about the server will appear on the screen, and then components will initialize and boot. In the end, you will see the ESXi installer welcome screen, so press Enter to continue or Escape to cancel the operation. After that, accept the license agreement by pressing the F11 key, and then storage devices available for installation will be scanned. The program has found the disk, so hit Enter to continue the installation to this disk. In the keyboard settings, don't change anything, and leave the options as they are. You as default, and press Enter to accept. After that, the installer will suggest setting a root password that you will use to enter the ESXi management console. Type the password, confirm it, and hit Enter to continue. In my case, the installer displays a warning that the central processor in this host may not be supported in future ESXi versions. Hit Enter to continue. Now the installer asks you to confirm the installation. Press the F11 key to start this operation. After the installation, you'll be asked to remove the installation media and then reboot. So hit the Enter key to do it. This is the last step of the installation process, and now you have to wait until the server reboots. Now the system is up and running, 
Above, you can see a brief overview of the server characteristics and below the IP address which you can use to connect to the server via the network. It can be modified in the settings if necessary. You can access them by pressing the F2 key and typing the login and root password. Here are the functions available through the settings menu. Modify the password, configure the network, restart the network manager, configure the keyboard, view system logs, access the console. Below, you have the option to reset the system configuration to default values. After the configuration is complete, you'll be able to connect them to the server from another computer in this network. Open the browser and type the service IP address. Take the risk of dealing with the untrusted certificate. On the page that opens, give the username and password for the root account that you specified during the ESXi installation. Click Login. Uh, this is how the VMW hypervisor looks like. Here, you can see the ESXi version and its state, not connected to any vCenter server. The next step is to create and configure a virtual machine. The system has detected the storage, identified the drive type, and provisioned some space for virtual machines. You can check the network settings as well. Now let's see how we can create a virtual machine. Open the navigator and go to the tab Virtual Machines. In the right side window, click Create, register VM and select one of the items. Create a new virtual machine, deploy a virtual machine from a special file, or register an existing virtual machine. As we want to create a new one, choose the first option and click Next. At the next stage, give a name to the future machine, select the family of its operating system and the version, and click Next. Select the storage and click Next again. In the Virtual Hardware tab, specify the settings for the new virtual machine, the number of processors and the amount of RAM to be allocated for the machine. Also, don't forget to allocate some disk space. In the CD-DVD drive settings, select the disk type as data store ISO file. And a new window opens to let you choose the file. At this stage, remember to check the box for the option Connected Power On, otherwise the system will refuse to boot from the disk. In the window that opens, look at the top left corner, click Upload and give the path to the ISO image file of the operating system that you have downloaded in advance. Click Open and wait until the image is loaded. After that, highlight it and click Select Next. Now check all the properties and click Finish. The new machine will appear on the list. The only thing left to do is to start it and install the operating system. Select the virtual machine and click Power On. To run it from the virtual disk drive, press any key. The actual process of installing an operating system to a virtual machine is the same as if you were installing it on your computer, so just follow the wizard directions. After the operating system is installed on your virtual machine, you can boot it and start using the machine. Here is how to recover data from a virtual machine created with the ESXi VM hypervisor. As we know, files of virtual machines managed by ESXi hypervisor are stored on the disk, in volumes having the VMFS file system. The biggest problem is that when an ESXi host breaks down, there is no way to retrieve the information stored on its disks, unless you use some specialized software. 
The matter is that classic Windows and Linux operating systems cannot recognize volumes or partitions with the VMFS file system. At the moment, such a data recovery tool as Hetman Partition Recovery doesn't support VMFS, but you can still use the program to scan the disk with this file system and extract the information. If you accidentally remove some important data inside the virtual machine, just install our program, run it, and scan the drive where you used to store the accidentally removed files. The program will find these files, and you'll be able to recover them. Select the disk to recover your data from, right-click on it, and choose Open. Select the scan type, click Next. And then finish when the process is over. After that, go to the directory containing the deleted files. You can see the program has found them easily, and now they are marked with the red cross. Select the files you want to restore and click Recovery. Choose the pathway to save them and click Recovery again. When the entire process is over, you will find the recovered files in the folder you have chosen. When the operating system on the server is damaged or the host suffers from a critical error, the data recovery gets a bit more complicated, because you can't just connect a disk to another computer and extract all the data you need. When running with the NTFS scan option, uh, Hetman Partition Recovery finds data in VMFS partition of the drive. As a result, you will be able to get the, the virtual machine data from the drive. Start the program, select the partition where virtual machine files are stored, and run the analysis. The file scan option is not available in this case. Select Full Analysis, specify the file system of the virtual machine disk, in my case this is NTFS on Windows, and click Next. As you can see, the program managed to find the virtual machine partition with Windows and the NTFS file system, which is located in the volume having the VMFS file system. Open the detected partition to find out that the utility is displaying all the files, even those that have been deleted. These are marked with the red cross. Select the files you want to recover and click Recovery. Select where you want to save them. When the process is over, you will find the recovered files in the folder you have selected. And that is all for now. Hopefully this video was useful. Remember to click the like button and subscribe to our channel. Push the bell button to receive notifications and never miss new videos. Leave comments to ask questions. Thank you for watching and good luck.